Welcome to Introduction to Debits, Credits, the Journal, and the Ledger. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is define two key terms. The first term is debit. Debit simply means left. The second term is credit, and credit simply means right. Many students start studying accounting with preconceived notions about the meanings of the words debit and credit. These notions come from interactions with banks or credit card companies. It's best to just to forget those preconceived notions and accept that debit means left and credit means right. The next thing we want to do is to understand three key rules when working with debits and credits. The first rule is that the total amount of debits must equal the total amount of credits. The sec another way to think of that is that debits are equal to credits. The second rule is that we need to understand the accounts that increase with debits. The accounts that increase with debits are dividend, expense, and asset accounts. Again, accounts that increase with debits are dividend, expense, and asset accounts. The third rule determines the accounts that increase with credits. The accounts that increase with credits are liabilities, equities, and revenue. Looking at it another way, if we take the first letter of each of the accounts that increase with debits, we have DEA, and then the accounts that increase with credits, we have LER. So we have an acronym to help us remember. Dividend, expense, and asset accounts increase with debits. Liability, equity, and revenue accounts increase with credits. Next, we want to look at the journal. The journal is a chronological list of all economic events that are recorded in the accounting records. The journal includes the date of the transaction, the account names affected by the transaction, the amount debited to each account, and the amount credited to each account. So let's, in addition, the journal includes a description of the transaction. Taking a closer look, we see a sample journal. It includes the date, the account name, debit, and credit. So if we recorded a journal entry that occurred on 9-3 of year one, we see a debit to the account cash in the amount of $100, a credit to sales revenue in the amount of $100. Our description is we received $100 from a customer for the sale of merchandise. We know exactly the economic event that took place and we see the accounting transaction that recorded this economic event. Our next journal entry happened on 9-3 of year one, and we see supplies being debited for $70 and accounts payable being credited for $70. The description is we purchased $70 worth of supplies on account. The economic event that occurred was the purchase of $70 of supplies on account. The accounting transaction that recorded this economic event was to debit supplies $70 and to credit accounts payable $70. The final economic event that we're going to look at happened on 9-5 of year one. Here we see a debit to accounts payable of $70 and a credit to cash for $70. We see that we paid for supplies purchased on account. One thing to notice in our journal is that we always write the accounts that are debited before we write the accounts that are credited. That's just a convention that is used by accountants. Remember, the journal is a chronological list of all economic events recorded in the accounting records. The journal includes the date, the account names, the amount debited to each account, 
and the amount credited to each account, as well as a description of the transaction. Reviewing the journal, we see a date, account name, the amount debited, the amount credited, and a description for each transaction recorded in the journal. Next, we want to take a careful look at the ledger. The ledger groups all of the transactions affecting a particular account together. The ledger reports the account balance, and a T account is a con way to conven conveniently represent the ledger. So let's take a more careful look at the ledger. The ledger includes an account name as well as a balance. The debit and credit columns are still there as well as a description. So here we see a cash ledger. A ledger differs from a journal in that only the part of the transaction affecting cash is written in the ledger. Here we see the cash ledger where we received cash from a customer of $100. Then on 9-5, we paid for supplies purchased on account for $70. We also see in the far right-hand column, we have a zero starting balance, a $100 increase in the balance when we receive cash from the customer, and a $70 decrease in the balance when we pay for supplies that are purchased on account. The debit in the cash account represents an increase in cash. The credit to the cash account represents a decrease in cash. Both journals and ledgers are included in a set of accounting records. Here we see an accounting record for accounts payable. Accounts payable has an opening balance of zero. It has an increase in the accounts payable account with a credit of $70. And then on 9-5, we paid for the supplies that we purchased on account, which decreased the liability accounts payable by $70. So our ending balance in accounts payable is zero after we make that payment. Next, let's take a look at the, the T account. A T account is a convenient way to summarize what happens in a particular ledger account. So here we have our cash account and we can draw a T over our debit and credit columns. Then we're going to bring that T down as well as the debit and credit entries included in the cash account to date. We're going to put our account name at the top of the T. We can draw a line and anytime we draw a line on our T account that indicates that we're about to report a balance. So we have a debit of $100, a credit of $70, which gives us an ending balance of $30. A T account is just a convenient way to show what has happened in a particular accounting record. So to review, we know that debit means left and credit means right. We know that the total amount of debits must equal the total amount of credits. Accounts that increase with debits Remember our acronym DEA, Dividends, Expenses, and Assets. And the accounts that increase, increase with credits, remember our acronym LER. So we've got dealer, DEA, LER. We have liabilities, equity, and revenue. The journal is a chronological listing of all economic events that are recorded in the counting records. The journal includes the date, the account names, the amounts debited, the amounts credited, as well as a description of the transaction. The ledger, our second accounting record that we're discussing, groups all of the transactions affecting a particular account together. The ledger reports the account balances, and the T account is a convenient way to represent the ledger. Remember that accounting records include both a journal and a ledger. They summarize all of the events 
that are recorded in the accounting records, but in a different way.